Down the bitch gang. Yay. Uh, five on the floor. Ride for my dogs. Where here's the thing. You can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buck said, you in trouble, y'all. Kept the floor playing. Got an all band. Y'all seen the block. Stop the one hand. And Pat, we trust. It's power, have the guts. We here to bring the heat. Y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor, post-game edition of Five on the Floor as the Miami Heat come away victorious against the Los Angeles Lakers in what I'm just going to straight up come right out and out and say this was the best game of the season. 108-107, the Miami Heat get the victory over Los Angeles. Uh, Hotly contested game, lots of technical fouls. It was close at the end, although there were some moments where you thought maybe it wouldn't be. This game had a little bit of everything. Today's floor plan with me, we have the coach, Sean Rochester. We also have Brian Fonseca. You can follow him on Twitter at Brian Fonseca and why. So this is the, the old school post game crew back again hopefully you'll see more of us on these home broadcasts this was uh who got you through most of last season and into the playoffs so excited to get this one popping because the heat um they showed up although it was ugly at the end we're gonna get into the to the ridiculous way that this game ended but overall it's a positive night because the miami heat ended up with a win And let's just get right into it with the Rocky Sports Gamer of the Night. And now on Five on the Floor, it's time for the Gamer of the Night, sponsored by Rock Esports Center, the place to eat, drink, and play all day. Host your next birthday party with them. Located at 15305 South Dixie Highway in Palmetto Bay, they've got a 5,500-square-foot state-of-the-art center equipped with all the high-end power. Play all-day passes, available for just 25 bucks. but if you mention five reasons... It's just $20. So mention five reasons or five RSN. You get to play all day for $20. And now, the gamer of the night. Y'all know where I'm going. No ceiling. Bam out of bio. 22, 20, and 10. This is big time stuff. Uh, I chronicled on off the floor a new discord here that this was the 44th triple double in franchise history bam out of the 14th player to get a triple double um a 2020 triple double i'll have to go dig into the archives to see when the last time the heat had one of those but he is absolutely the gamer of the night in a on a night when there could be many different gamers brian i'll come to you first on this one bam was aggressive from the get-go Even against Anthony Davis early on in this game, it was unfortunate Anthony Davis uh, ended up not being able to really close this game or be highly effective, Um, although he did have nine, six, and four. I mean, he he was kind of getting going and was a problem early on, but he didn't finish the game. Some sort of lower leg injury, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. But let's stick with Bam Adebayo. We're going to get to everybody. But the gamer of the night showed up big. I love the uh, the aggressiveness, the fact that um, even if the efficiency isn't there, you're seeing him go up for second attempts, get back to the basket, uh, and he's just he looks more confident. He looks physically more ready to take on this kind of role. What did you see from Bam Adebayo that you like tonight? His best game in a while. I mean, for starters, um, I felt like he, even when Anthony Davis was out there, he was really making a concerted effort to be dominant. It felt like his playmaking was great. He had that one bounce pass to Jaime Jaquez uh, on a fast break where Jaime finished it for a layup, who I thought played well also, showed some things. And I really liked what I saw from Bam overall, he was also aggressive. At one point I looked up, he was eight for 18 shooting. And this was in like the third quarter, not something you would see a lot. Um, it, it feels like this team still needs Jimmy Bam and Tyler to mostly carry a lot of it. But at the same time, I just think that 
with Bam doing this, I mean, historic is not going to be something that he does all the time, as uh, Sean is letting us know in the chat, which he'll talk more about. But for him to have these games a little more frequently, I feel like it's part of the next step. And also, he hit an above-the-break three-pointer, which I feel like we could spend a couple minutes on because right? <laughs> I, I don't think... I'm, I'm closer to Sean on this than anybody else, where I don't think he should be just popping threes the way that Brooke Lopez did after Kenny Atkinson told him to, the way that Al Horford did after Kenny Atkinson told him to. However, right. if they're going to guard you at the free throw line and you're bringing the ball up the court, and they're kind of expecting you to just dribble handoff with Tyler or Duncan or to just look for a wing to pass it to like a Kyle Lowry. You could take that three every now and then one every three, four games, which keep you get to like 20, 30. Yeah. Keep them honest. 20, 30 attempts in the season, something like that. I feel like if Bam's going to shoot a three with any sort of quarter regularity, <laughs> then yeah, it should be that one, not something from the corner. Although, you know, if you're open and you feel good, take it. That probably makes sense. But I think if he's going to shoot a three and sort of make the defense come out, it should be that one because then he has a speed to blow by an Anthony Davis or most guys that are going to guard him or not guard him from out there. Make them sort of push up so that he can actually play, make more, get to the basket more. I think that's something that's noteworthy. And I, I, I hope to see that in his toolbox more often. I agree. I, I thought that just being aggressive in general for him is a hurdle that, you know, once he gets past that, he often other parts of his game just open up. Uh, Sean, I'll pivot with some of the other guys at the top of the roster. Um, Jimmy Butler, he put in a hell of a game. It was an, it was a weird Jimmy Butler game where like you just didn't realize that all of a sudden he had 11 and I feel like he hadn't even scored yet. And then he, you know, very efficiently finds his way into 28 points, seven of seven from the free throw line, six assists, two steals came up big at the end. Uh, and it felt like he and bam had some two man action that I thought was better than uh, some of the, and and we're going to get to the late game stuff. So let's the very end of the fourth quarter, we're going to compartmentalize. I always have a hard time saying that word, that part of the game, but early on and, you know, even into the second half, it felt like Tyler Bam and Jimmy were more in a groove than they had been in quite some time. Jimmy Butler specifically. Uh, did you feel like he was um, a better so, like, did he compliment Tyler in a different way tonight that you saw anything different to me? There seemed to be something uh, where these guys were just a little more fluid tonight than they've been in recent matchups. Yeah. Before I even talk about Jimmy, let me add the historical context that Brian was hinting towards. First player in franchise history, Bam, with 20, 20, and 10. Hasn't happened in franchise history. Wow. So very cool on that. Um, fifth player in NBA history with 20, 20, 10, 2, and 2. I know it's one of those weird, like, specific things, but Kareem, Jokic, Chris Weber, Boogie Cousins, and now Bam. So. Th three, four pretty good players on there. I'm not going to necessarily get boogied out, but he was all right. Anyways, Jimmy. Jimmy definitely, to me, he, he made his imprint and he took what was available. There were times when Jimmy recognized that he had a mismatch inside and he played bully ball. He put his shoulder into the guy's chest and powered through him. There were times where he had the advantage on the outside he shot the three, obviously tonight, and uh, you know those are those are bonus things for Jimmy. I don't, you know, I don't expect three three out of four or even three threes from Jimmy on every given night. But like, you know how sometimes you can watch Jimmy and you just see like in his legs and in the way that he's shooting the ball, it's fluid. There was the one that he had a pull up on like the right short corner. I think it was over LeBron, pivoted into his left like left foot pivot right into his shot, knocked it down. Like, no hesitation, no pump fake, none of that stuff. Just caught, turned, shot, boom. That's the stuff that 
you see normally in the playoffs that we don't get often in the in the regular season. And this kind of had I know we're trying to glorify it, but like they said on the broadcast, it has a playoff feel, right? Maybe because there was like 15 technical fouls and it was LeBron, whatever. But like the in- environment was good, and maybe that's what got Jimmy to rise up a little bit. Um, and then Tyler, you know, I know we're gonna hold the last, you know, the last few minutes off until later. But you know, these guys combined for 72 points. I thought Tyler was good. Um, he hit some big shots. You know, I think Bam was the best in the game, but I think Jimmy and and Tyler. They were more fluid than they have been. We've talked about my turn, your turn stuff. It was much more fluid tonight than it was before. And it needed to be because they almost coughed that game up. We're saving the end for for, for last. We're, we're, we're ending uh, on probably what will be a more somber note, but ultimately they got the victory. So as we get into this next segment, we're going to highlight something good. That's the... Uh, a aggressive insurance play of the night. Let's go to it. And now it's time for the insurance by Lynette play of the night sponsored by insurance by Lynette.com and a aggressive insurance agency. You can reach out to our friend Lynette at 954-581-8800. That's 954-581-8800 or insurance by Lynette.com. That's insurance by Lynette.com with two N's and two T's your best play for auto insurance, homeowners insurance, condo insurance, life insurance, or a retirement program, reach out to Lynette at insurancebylynette.com. And the play of the night, I mean, for me, there was a ton of them, but towards the end of the game, there was a pull-up jump shot that Jimmy Butler made, assisted by Tyler Hero, uh, and then there was a steal by Jimmy And then it ended up with, I believe, Austin Reeves on Jimmy. And Jimmy put one right on his head, deep down in the post. That's where I'm going for the play of the night because I felt like that was the kind of lunch pail, heat culture-like finish to a a possession that we like to see. So shout out to A Aggressive Insurance. Shout out to Jimmy Butler for that. Tyler Hero was big in this game as well. Um, Six turnovers. I think that that's going to kind of lean into where we go towards the end here. Cause the fourth quarter was a mess y'all like they, as much as this is a good win and it's a home win and we're going to take every win that, that you can stack up. You're not going to, you know, dissect it too, too much, but nine turnovers, at least it, it nine was where I had stopped counting was where the turnovers were in the fourth quarter. Brian, that's not good. Kyle Lowry's in the game. He has no turnover. So you're really getting it from your primary playmakers. Um, and then just dumb plays here or there. But there was some at the end there that were really boneheaded. Uh, one from Bam that was just like, you know, a bad travel. But there was others throughout the game. What do you think it is that's happening to this team where at the end um, they're still – uncomfortable the Lakers did kind of I guess ratchet up the pressure a little bit in this game it wasn't like a regular at least compared to the other regular season games Miami has played in that arena so far this one seemed like it had a little bit more significance but still it got ugly towards the end they squeaked out the victory but what the hell is happening to this team late in games with taking care of the ball and on top of that they're not scoring in these fourth quarters um i noted that early on or before this i noted that they were <laughs> they were getting outscored by 34 in these fourth quarters in the six games prior to this during the season and the lakers outscored them in the fourth quarter by 10 because it was 90 79 going in the heat only walked away with 18 points um they were able to hold on and get the win which I guess ultimately is what matters here. But now you're minus 44 in fourth quarters um, with the only edge going over the Milwaukee Bucks, which is something I bet on. I took the Lakers fourth quarter money line going into the game. Yo, I was about to say, I saw it like five o'clock this afternoon. Brian bet on the fourth quarter. I was like, what is going on? What does this man know? Now I know. <laughs> I also, the data has been exposed. <laughs> Sean, Sean, I also hit my 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 middle America parlay. Uh, which was a Tyler Hero over on rebounds. 
uh, Tyler Hero over on steals and Austin Reeves over points, rebounds, and assists. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. um but yeah i, I just think th- there's a lot placed on jimmy bam and tyler in the fourth quarter i think is what it kind of boils down to where if they're not almost perfect other guys need to make plays and they haven't quite found that formula yet i still think with this roster construction you might be missing a couple of pieces rotation pieces um, who could play into that and, and Kayla Martin is probably one of them right like I think I think you'll look up at some point and fourth quarter lineups will be not every time but you'll see fourth quarter lineups of Tyler Hero, Kayla Martin, Jimmy Butler, Haywood Highsmith, Bam Adebayo. Agreed. Um, I, I think until they chick something up which I don't know if they're going to do that but I, I think they just need a lot from a lot of guys it feels like uh, or they just need those top three guys, Jimmy Bam and Tyler, to be themselves, which is easier said than done because who is the other team going to be focused on? Obviously, it's true. I uh, I was disconcerted with the way that the game ended because it felt like what was what was becoming a fluid end of game uh, circumstance for Miami because of the way the first three quarters had gone. It was such an opportunity for them to really close a game strong. Um, and Sean, it, it just it got ugly down the stretch. Duncan is still a bright spot throughout all of this. I feel like Hawkes is still showing some things off the bench. Um, Josh Richardson had a couple plays tonight. I think ultimately he's still uneven here. Uh, anybody that we've missed, I'm going to hit the injury report before we get to final thoughts, but I – I, I want to make sure we've given everybody their due. I feel like we, um, I I often glaze over Kyle Lowry, so uh, so correct me if I'm wrong there. But I feel like Duncan Robinson is continuing to prove an integral part of this offense. Um, anything else? Any observations from you uh, from an offensive perspective from this team tonight? Uh, well, Heater three and one when the others. I don't know. We needed a better term for this because it's very like dehumanizing. But the the non big three when they score thirty five or more, the Heater three and one. And I think that's telling that when you're getting contributions from other people tonight. You know, it was it was Duncan that led the way with twelve. Um, you had Haywood with five, Lowry with five, uh, Jaime Hawkins, who I thought was great with nine. Uh, like you said, Josh three, and then Thomas Bryant two. So you know, scattered here and there. I, I do like the activity, and I text you guys during, I think, the third quarter that we talked a lot about rim pressure, and Spo has emphasized this talking to Brady or Alex had a question recently, and, and I felt like tonight the, the off-ball movement, the cutting, you can simulate rim pressure by having hard, effective cuts that make the defense collapse, and I think tonight it looked better that way, it, you know, in, in terms of until the end. But that's also NBA basketball. It's not something I would necessarily fault the Heat for. At the end of games, it flattens out. It's generally your star going one on one, maybe one action, pick and roll, high pick and roll. Um, and it didn't look pretty tonight. The decision making was not good tonight. But like Brian said, and like you hinted towards, you only have Tyler and Jimmy that can really initiate in that situation. You're not putting the ball in Kyle's hands in that situation at all. And I don't trust Josh to do it either. So I don't think he's the guy there either. And as much as Bam can do it, I don't think that's the situation for Bam, especially when you look at when he got that ball, I wanted him to catch and fire. I don't care if he misses it, but the little the shimmy and then travel, that just makes me think even less about putting the ball in his hands to make a decision. Um, So, you know, it's something you got to work out. It's game seven. You're not supposed to be perfect right now. But at the end of the day, even though nobody scored uh, in the last two minutes and 39 seconds of that fourth quarter, which is crazy, they found a way to get a win. So. That's the most important thing. Nobody scored in that many minutes. That's a great segue right into the injury report. And now it's time for the official five on the floor injury report sponsored by our friend Eric Rubenstein, the personal injury attorney. Born and raised in Lauderdale, Florida, lives in Miami, went to St. Thomas. He's a South Florida guy and a huge Miami Heat fan. But the important thing is he can help you get your money that you deserve when something happens to you. So reach out to our guy, Eric Rubenstein. Again, ericrubenstein.com or ask about me. I got you on Instagram. And now, the injury report. The injury report was our eyes at the end of that game with the way that the offense 
just it was in the mud for, on both ends. But you know what? It was a LeBron game. There were some clutch finishes from LeBron. Uh, I felt like there were some Jimmy LeBron moments. There were some Bam out of bio LeBron moments. It looked like even Tyler and him were jawing at each other, which I think is a weird, interesting dynamic. So it was fun all around. But if we're going through the injuries, Caleb Martin's still on the shelf. I don't expect him to play soon. Um, not because I think it's like a multi-week kind of thing. I just think they're going to be really careful, and this road trip will probably be uh, time for him to additionally take off. Jovic didn't play with some sort of non-COVID illness, as did our RJ Hampton was out with the same thing, so I don't know if there's something going around the team. So that's your injury report. Everyone else was available. Kevin Love, Orlando Robinson, Drew Smith, uh, did not play coach's decision. So you're with a tight nine man rotation there. Uh, final thoughts, y'all, uh, Brian, 30 seconds or less. How are you feeling about this team now as they, uh, get another victory on their home floor and Wednesday head into the one and six Memphis Grizzlies. One and six Memphis Grizzlies who are going to play desperate and, uh, the heat have to be very careful. I joked on playback. Is Jimmy Butler going to care about this game? Um, two guys that I think will and should are Bam Adebayo, who will be opposite of Jaron Jackson Jr., <laughs> and Tyler Hero, who will be opposite of Desmond Bain. Um, maybe the memories of the playoffs and seeing Marcus Smart will do something to this team as well. But, you know, Memphis is a team that's desperate. I don't think they're one in six bad, but I do think that, you know, they're just, they're just missing a lot of guys, namely John ja Morant. Steven Adams, who's done for the year, and Brandon Clark, who will we don't know when he's going to be back. But this is still a dangerous team who, you know, is going to be on their home floor. So I think what you want to see from the Heat is just consistent, consistently good play, smart decisions, effort. And really, for me, it's the fourth quarter because I, I keep saying this and when we're texting or where we're on playback, don't care about anything in the first half at this point. I need to see them finish game strong because this was their calling card in the playoffs. And this is how they went on their deep run. They were great in fourth quarters in second halves in general. They were great in the third quarter today. I thought the third quarter was the best they played all game today. And then in the fourth quarter, granted, it's the Lakers, it's LeBron, but the Heat have to figure out what's going on in the fourth quarter. It's the only fourth quarter that they had with, that was a positive one was against the Milwaukee Bucks. And the Bucks didn't have their starters, so for a good portion of that. So the Heat have some things to figure out late in games. They do, and now they're going to have to go out on the road. Uh, they are at Memphis, at Atlanta, at San Antonio, at Charlotte before they finally end up back home against Brooklyn. So that'll be an interesting trip. Those aren't all you know contenders necessarily, but they're teams that are going to present their challenges. We, sh we shall see how it goes, but the Heat do get the victory tonight. So uh, that is a positive. 108-107, the Heat uh, close against the L.A. Lakers. Thanks to Sean. Thanks to Brian. Thank you to our sponsors. Have a great night, and make sure you continue uh, to check out all of our coverage. We have Floors Yours back. We have Floor Crew, another new show that's really good. You got to make sure to go to Five Reasons Sports YouTube channel and check out all of those different new programs on the YouTube channel. Have a good night. Thank you for listening to the Five on the Floor on the Five Reasons Sports Network. After all, someone needs to listen to my dad. <laughs>